want to share with you a word that the Lord has put in my spirit that I think is very important, and it's rekindling an old principle that we know, but sometimes we forget, and it's the principle of the power of prayer. When I was a young boy in my parents' home, prayer was not optional. Prayer was a daily routine. It was a habit in our home. Our parents were people of prayer. I know what my mother's prayers sound like. I know what my father's prayers sound like. When I wasn't doing right and living the way I should for the Lord when I was a teenager, my dad would kneel outside of my bedroom and he'd pray, oh God, save Tony. God, move on his life. And I could, I was touched by hearing the voice of my father pray. But all of that started at a young age for my brother and I, Andrew. We would, every night, we would gather around my parents' bed and we would pray. My parents would begin, we would finish. They were teaching us how to pray. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Forgive us for our sins. I normally never didn't say that loud enough, and my mother would say, <clears throat> Tony. And, you know, for me it was plural. Forgive me for my sins and my sins and my sins and my sins. My parents were teaching us a very important language. We spoke English in our home. We spoke Spanish in our home, but my parents were teaching us the language that moves heaven. It is the language of our Heavenly Father. It is the language of prayer. They were teaching us how to communicate with the Father. Before we would leave for school every morning, we would have to pray. My mother would pray over us. My mother would pray that the angels of the Lord would accompany us. My mother would pray that God would protect us and give us wisdom and give us knowledge and that God would be with us and that God would be for us and that his angels would bring us home safely. It didn't matter if we were running late for school. We could not leave the house until we had prayed. <clears throat> There's one particular memory that sticks out in my mind. About 31 years ago, I was in the fourth grade, and I am assigned to the class of the teacher that was deemed the meanest teacher in our school. She had an attitude problem. She was always angry. She was known to kick desks, hit them with rulers, get in a kid's face and yell at them. And I was terrified to be in her class. So I came home. Don't judge me. I don't play rugby. I came home crying. Mom, I can't survive the fourth grade. Not with this teacher. Mom, we got to do something. Call the lawyers. Do something. My mom said, we're going to pray about it. And because I was raised Pentecostal, I said, amen, mom, let's do it. I declare this teacher is under my feet. I rebuke her in the name of Jesus. I cast her back to the pits of hell from where she came from in Jesus' name. You know, in America, we always pray in E-flat. <laughs> and my mom said, no, 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 not like that. <laughs> My mother prayed the kindest prayer I'd ever heard her pray. She sounded like Joel Osteen, and there wasn't a Joel Osteen yet. My mom said, God, I thank you for Tony's teacher. I thank you for this school. I thank you for her life. I thank you that you're blessing her, and you're moving on her. And I'm praying with one eye open. I'm like, are we talking about the same person right now? Because what? She said, I just thank you that Tony's going to have the greatest year he's ever had in school. I thank you that peace abounds in that classroom. I just thank you that shalom, right? I don't even know what shalom is, but she says, shalom is going to reign in that room, and this can be the greatest year of Tony's life. I just thank you for blessing that teacher. I thank you for blessing Tony, and this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the incorruptible, indisputable word of God. My mind is alert. I will never be, never, never, never. Turns, I thought Joel Osteen came up with that. Turn out he got it from my mom. That's a joke for the webcast. You get sued after the service by Lakewood. Just teasing. And then my mom said, here's a note. Give it to your teacher. And I was hoping that the note said something ugly like, mess with my kid and I'll come and kill you. Not, not kill, kick you. So I read the note. She invited the teacher to my piano recital. I'm like, Mom, you can't bring her to the recital. She'll kick the piano. She's mean. She said, give the note to your teacher. So I went to class. I gave her a note. She looked at it. <clears throat> you may take your seat. So I take my seat, and then she calls me. Young man. She had one of those long fingers that just, you know, <laughs> like you're. And, I, and I, I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to get in trouble for passing notes to the teacher in class. She calls me out to the hallway, and she said, young man, 
no one has ever invited me to a piano recital. No one has ever done something this kind. Tell your mother I'll be there. Well, not only did she come to that piano recital, she came to every piano recital and every concert I had until I graduated high school. She became a family friend to us. She was my friend. She was the nicest, one of the nicest teachers I ever had. That year, she didn't kick any desks. That year, there was no emotional outburst. That year was one of my greatest years. Now, the next year, I heard she kicked somebody right in the face. But the year I was there, the year my mama went all Joel Osteen on her, that year was the greatest year of elementary school for me. And it left a, an imprint on my life because it showed me and it demonstrated to me that when you pray, God answers your prayers. Come on, somebody, give them praise in the house. I know it's a common saying. I know it's cliche at this point, but prayer changes things. That showed me that even the smallest things, if you pray about it, God hears us from heaven. Prayer is that language. It's that thing that moves heaven on your behalf. And when you pray, you have direct access to Almighty God. You don't have to go through the pastor, the priest, the bishop, the prophet, the apostle. You can go directly to the Son of God and He will hear you and He will answer you. You say, now why would you say that? Because it's important that we cut out the middle men and the middle women. I was at a restaurant with my kids and the food was terrible. Everything was wrong. Wrong cut of steak. Wrong temperature. The side items were wrong. My kids were well, in case they're watching, they're wonderful, but they had a bad attitude. Everything was wrong that day at the restaurant. And I complained to the waitress. I complained to the busboy. And I finally got frustrated and said, let me talk to the manager. And the manager came out. I said, sir, this was wrong, this was wrong, this was wrong, this was wrong. And he stopped. He said, wait, why are you just now calling for me? I said, he said, who, who have you been talking to? I said, well, I talked to this person. I talked to this person. He said, that's the problem. You've been talking to the wrong people. He said, if you would have called for me 30 minutes ago, I could have solved this and fixed this for you a long time ago. But you've been talking to the wrong people. And I sat back in the chair and I thought, that is the story of my life. Because trouble comes my way, and I don't go to Jesus first, I go to Facebook first. And I complain, and if you don't like it, I get mad at you. I write something and you don't like it, I block you. I knew there was a witness in the house. I felt that spirit of blocking on. I knew it was here. Take authority over that blocking spirit in the name of Jesus. I'm sick, and there's a website. I don't know if you have it here. There's a website called WebMD, and people go, and you put in your symptoms, and it supposedly tells you what you have. Every time I go to WebMD, it tells me I'm dying. Every time I have gone to that website, it says, caution, you may want to go to the hospital. This could be life-threatening. So I've, like, been scared that I'm going to die, like, seven different times in my life. And it turned out to be nothing because I go to the wrong people. I leave God as my last option. Several years ago, I moved to Virginia, and I didn't have enough money to pay the mortgage. And I said, God, I need money. I need money. I need money. Send somebody. Send somebody. Send somebody. Well, nobody came. And then right when it was time to pay the bill, there was no money. I had no hope. And I came to God in prayer. I said, God, you're my last resort. And he said, that's the problem. He said, that's the problem. You've asked me to send relatives to bless you, friends to bless you, brethren to bless you. But you haven't asked me to be your source. You, by your own admission, just said that I am your last hope. He said, Tony Suarez, I'm not your last hope. I am your only hope. Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto thee. Ladies and gentlemen, prayer changes things. If you go to God, he will answer your prayers. There is a man in the Bible by the name of Joshua. He is fighting a battle and the sun begins to set and he needs more sunlight to win the fight. And so Joshua prays a crazy prayer. He prays and he says, oh God, I need that sun to stand still. 
Now you're a smart bunch here. That's scientifically impossible. What he is praying is illogical. It makes no sense. He's asking God to do something crazy. What he is praising, what he is praying about makes absolutely no sense. But does God call him crazy? Does God ignore his prayer? No. God says if that boy is crazy enough to pray that prayer, then I'm God enough to answer the prayer. And the Bible says that that day the sun stood still until Joshua won the battle. And I feel like there's some Joshuas in this room that need to pray a crazy prayer, a radical prayer. And your God that it is in heaven is God enough to answer that crazy prayer. Come on, somebody, give him praise. I come to talk to you today, not about what you're complaining about, not what you're stressed out about, not what's eating at you, bugging you, but I want to know what are you praying about? Because when you pray, God answers prayer. This book that is the manual of our life tells us about example after example of somebody praying and God answering their prayers. One of the chief examples that stands out to me comes from the book of 1 Samuel. It's the story of the great prophet Samuel. His life is directly connected to prayer. He had a good daddy named Elkanah. Elkanah had a problem. Elkanah had too many wives. No, he had more than one. Somebody right now is like, oh, my God. are you? He had two wives. This is why he shouldn't have two. They're all, the wives are always fighting. One is jealous of the other because one is, a, is really, really blessed with kids, and the other one doesn't have any kids. And Okana says stupid things. He doesn't know how to. So one day, Hannah is crying about not having kids. Panina, her sister wife, has made fun of her for not having any kids. Panina taunts Hannah all the time. And Hannah is reduced to tears. The Bible says year after year, it's the same thing. They all go to Shiloh. They all go to sacrifice to the Lord. And Hannah is left in tears because she doesn't have anything. And Panina is always mocking her. And one day, Hannah is praying to God, asking God for a child. And Elkanah comes by and he says, baby, aren't I better than ten children? Am I not, <laughs> I'm trying to talk like my kids, aren't I a good enough snack? Am I not everything you need, boo? And Hannah's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, buddy, you're everything, yeah. Marriage counseling starts right then and there. Hannah is in deep anguish. Hannah cries bitter tears, but Hannah prays. I'm preaching this morning to every Hannah that's in this room and every Hannah that's watching us via the live stream. Who is a Hannah? Hannah is the person that doesn't have what everyone else has. You've lived through mockery. You've lived through ridicule. You've seen everyone else get blessed. You've seen everyone else prosper. You've seen everyone else live in abundance. Everyone else is getting married. Everyone else is having children. Everyone else is getting a bonus and a raise and a promotion. Everyone else is going from glory to glory, and you're stuck at two. I'm preaching directly to you. Year after year, it's the same. You've been a member of Inspired Church since 1982. You got the hat from 1982. It's time to buy a new hat, by the way. But you've been here forever, and you've seen everyone else get blessed, and you've asked yourself the question, when is it going to be my season? When does my turn for blessing come? Elkanah comes to Hannah, and he says, why? Are you asking for this? I'm enough. What's Elkanah doing? He's trying to quench her faith. Elkanah has good intentions, but he doesn't understand what he's doing. Who are the Elkanahs in your life? The Elkanahs are the people that try to talk you out of a miracle. Talk you out of believing for a healing. Try to talk you out of believing for a raise. They're the ones, you say, I'm going to start a business, and they're like, no, that'd be a bad idea. But they don't know what you've heard in prayer. They don't know what you've lived through. They don't know who you are. They don't know what your tenacity is like. They don't know that you've been preparing for this special day. These are the people that try to talk you out of fighting for your marriage or praying for you because they, and, and they love you. I didn't say they're the devil. They're the people that you have around you, but they don't understand your faith. There's a boy in the Bible named Joseph who had this problem. His problem was he told everybody his dreams. And not everybody can understand your dreams. He sat down with his brothers. He said, ooh, let me tell you what the Lord showed me last night. And by the time he got done, they're like, yeah, throw him in the pit. 
Because they didn't dream his dream. You got to be careful who you talk to. You have to be careful who you share with. Because not everybody can have the faith that you have. I have crazy faith. I don't tell everybody the things I'm believing God for. Because if I told you, you'd say I'm nuts. But I serve a crazy God. I read a Bible that says that he held the sun up for Joshua. I read a Bible that said a widow gave the prophet the last that she had, and she had enough food for the next several years. I read about a God who parted the Red Seas and did this and did that. And when I read about it, it challenges my faith because I believe that if he did it for them, he might just do it for me. Come on, somebody. So Elkanah is trying to talk her out of the miracle. Penina is mocking her for what she doesn't have. So she has people quenching her faith and ridiculing her faith. And if that's not enough, while she, where she should have found refuge is in the house of God. So she goes to the temple. She's praying outside of the temple. And the high priest Eli sees her and he says, that woman is drunk. Somebody do something. Ushers, come and get the crazy lady. And it turns out that even the church doesn't understand her faith. So she's irrelevant in the church. Her husband's trying to quench her faith. And the person that should be her best friend is making mockery of her. But thank God she didn't stop praying. She didn't stop praying praying. When she was mocked, she prayed. When they tried to quench her faith, she prayed. When they called her crazy, she kept praying. And thank God she did. Because if she would have succumbed to Alcana's counsel, Panina's criticism, or the church's ridicule, if she stops praying, the history of Israel would have been altered forever. Because if she doesn't pray, there's no Samuel. If there's no Samuel, there's no one to interpret the voice of God to Eli. If there is no Samuel, there's no one to recover the Ark of the Covenant. If there's no Samuel, there's no one to anoint Saul. There's no one to anoint David. There's no one to correct. Do you see what I'm trying to say? All of Israel's history is connected to one praying lady. I don't know who I'm preaching to in this room right now, but you're one prayer away from a miracle. You're one prayer away from abundance. You are one prayer away from your entire lineage and genealogy changing from curses to blessing. All because you prayed. Hallelujah. Thank God. She didn't let one critical voice change her prayer life. Thank God. She prayed. Verse 10, 1 Samuel chapter 1 says that she prayed and she said, Oh, Lord of heaven's armies, look on my sorrow, but answer my prayer. This helped me. This really helped me, and I hope it helps you. Here's the difference between Hannah and us. Hannah was anguished. Hannah cried. Hannah got bitter, but Hannah did not stop praying. And this is what I've learned in my life. I've lived through a lot of hurt. I've lived through a lot of loss. I've, in the last five years, I have buried my father. I buried the mother of my children, my first wife of 13 years. And I, I have experienced extreme tragic loss in my life. And I know what it's like to be sorrowful. And I know what it's like to cry. And I know what it's like to be bitter. I understand what it's like to be depressed. But here's the difference between us and Hannah. Normally, we have all of those emotions, but we keep them bottled up inside, and we just get full of bitterness. Hannah had those emotions, but Hannah kept praying. And this is what I've learned about God. God sees our sorrow. He dries our tears, but God doesn't answer our sorrow. God answers our prayers. The Bible says, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, don't be anxious about anything. Pray about everything. When you pray to God, ladies and gentlemen, he answers your prayer. I can prove it to you. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 19. The Bible says, and the Lord remembered her sorrow. That's not what it says. He remembered her tears. No, it says the Lord remembered her prayer. And in due time, she gave birth to a son named Samuel. And she said, I asked. Or another version says, I prayed to the Lord for him. You might be one prayer away. You might be one prayer away from the miracle. And if you're in this auditorium, if you're watching us via live stream, I'm talking to the Hannahs in this room. 
turn up the volume and get ready because here is the word of the Lord. Here is what God would say to you. To you that has watched everyone else get blessed. Everyone else prosper. Everyone else live in blessing. And you've waited and you've watched and you've been confused and you've cried and you've hoped and you've anguished and you've been perplexed and you've lived even bitter at times. Here is the word of the Lord to you. Pray and pray without ceasing. Pray till the bitterness turns into tears and then the ter tears turn into joy. Pray until you can't speak English. Pray until you can't speak in Spanish. Pray until you're praying in the Holy Ghost and then watch as God answers your prayer because I declare to you, God will remember, God will honor, and God is going to answer your prayer. Come on, somebody give him praise. Turn to prayer and then watch God turn it around on your behalf. You've cried about the situation long enough. You've talked about it long enough. You've been bitter about it long enough. Now turn to prayer. Do you know that God can't answer the things you're just brewing in your mind? This is what I normally do. I get upset about something and I just let it brew in my mind. But you know what happens with my mind? My mind has a wild imagination. So normally, I get things and turn it in bigger than what it actually is. Because the longer it brews in my mind, the bigger my imagination makes it and makes it and makes it. And God can't bless what I'm ticked off about. God can't bless what I'm upset about. God blesses what I pray about. So it's better to take that thing to prayer and then watch God turn it around. It's better to take it to prayer and watch God answer on our behalf, one of the benefits of being baptized in the Holy Spirit is that God has given us a prayer language. He's given us a heavenly language. You know what I've learned about praying in this Holy Spirit? You know one thing I've learned about tongues? Oh, are we about to get Pentecostal? Yes, I am. <laughs> Let me tell you what I've learned about the Holy Spirit. There's one entity who does not speak in other tongues. He lives under your feet. When you pray in the Spirit, it's like praying in code. And the only one that understands it is your heavenly father. When you pray in the spirit, the Bible says that when you know not what to pray for, the Bible says pray in the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Spirit makes intercession on your behalf. So when you're praying in the spirit, your heavenly father says, I know exactly what you need. Now here comes your healing. Here comes your blessing. Here comes your miracle. If you don't know what to pray about today, pray in the Holy Ghost. And let the Holy Ghost make intercession for you. And I guarantee you, I promise you, God will answer your prayers. Somebody give them praise in this house. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says come unto me and pray to me and I will hear you. God answers what you pray about. And in due season it wasn't that long afterwards that Hannah no longer had to come to Shiloh alone. Hannah no longer had to see how everyone else was blessed. Hannah was able to walk in with her little blessing named Samuel. And if it would, now I'm going to tell you how I am. The Bible says to make your boast in the Lord. If it would have been me, I wouldn't have been hiding Samuel. I would have walked in like Samuel was the Lion King. I'd have walked in. Hey! because I'd want everyone to know I was the one that was barren I was the one that didn't have anything but one day I prayed and my God loves me so much that he heard my plea he cared about me and he answered my prayer you can't boast in yourself but if God answers your prayer you lift up that answered prayer as a testimony and begin to brag on Jesus and let people know God still answers prayer would you clap your hands and give God praise in this house